I'm Mike, and today I want to talk about a fact that has been blowing my mind recently, and that is that the amount of waste created by livestock in the U.S. alone is equivalent to the waste from 39 billion humans, or five and a half times the population of Earth. Again, that's just the United States. So we're going to look at the implications of this and some of the measured effects, many of which you've probably never heard about. And this video is not going to be the most viewed video ever. People already don't like hearing about their food choices, and they definitely don't like hearing about poop. And I'm going to talk about their food choices poop. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Is this one of those vegan statistics where they add a zero because of their evil vegan agenda to just make you feel guilty? Not to save animals. No, it's actually from an official government report. It says, quote, Nationwide, about 130 times more animal waste is produced than human waste. Now, I've actually seen people complain that vegans just create too much food waste with all their veggie scraps, like, oh no, kale stems. Well, if you're an omnivore and you trace your diet back through the line, we can see again from the report that you are responsible for roughly five tons of waste. There is literally 10,000 pounds or 4,500 kilograms of poop out there with your name on it. And that's not counting the plant waste required to feed those animals. And what about vegetarians? Well, looking at dairy cows, which are quite productive poopers, based off numbers from the USDA, looking at nitrates, which are one of the main concerns associated with manure that I'll get into more in a bit, it would take 8 million cows worth of poop to produce as many nitrates as the entire population of humans, and we have 9 million dairy cows in the US. So why should we care about all this poop? Well, let's start with one of the more overlooked reasons, which is the spreading of antibiotic or antimicrobial resistant bacteria. According to this report, deaths from antimicrobial resistant infections will surpass cancer deaths by 2050. And animal feeding operations might be the most effective way to realize this horror, since a large portion of these 70 billion land animals that we raise and slaughter each year are given antibiotics to increase growth. In the US, we effectively give 80% of our total antibiotics to these animals, which are forced to live in unhygienic conditions, which are ideal for breeding such resistance. Perhaps you've heard of MRSA, a antibiotic resistant strain of staph. Well, a more recent strain of MRSA originated from hog farms and allegedly was transferred through the mishandling of manure by workers, which is guaranteed to happen. It is also worth noting that this same manure that is loaded with resistant bacteria is then dumped or sprayed on vegetable fields and other crop fields as fertilizer. And then we wonder why our spinach has E. coli in it. And we go and, we go and blame the migrant workers for maybe pooping in the fields. No, it was the 20,000 pounds of manure that you sprayed all over these fields. And no, E. coli is not a plant infection like aphids. It is an animal pathogen. All this manure, of course, runs off into ground groundwater of the 41,000 contaminated waterways determined by the EPA in the US, the three main sources of contamination, not in any particular order, are one, excess nutrients, mostly from manure, as you'll see in a bit, two, heavy metals, probably mostly from industry, but also from manure, and three, pathogens from manure. As this study shows, if you compare groundwater that is downhill from an animal feeding operation to the water that is uphill, not only do you find E. coli concentrations that are 4 to 33 times higher, but you find massively elevated percentages of antibiotic resistant bacteria, and they are resistant to antibiotics used on humans, not just animals. Now let's look to those excess nutrients, the main concern of which is nitrates. Nitrates can be especially harmful for infants if you are feeding your baby well water they can get blue baby syndrome which is their body's impaired ability to transport oxygen nitrates are also associated with hyperthyroidism diabetes and a variety of cancers including reproductive cancers and brain cancer now to get an idea of the scale of this here is a map of the manure distribution across the u.s and here is the map of the risk of nitrogen contamination in groundwater highlighting that many aquifers are at high risk and these are the nitrogen concentrations in Wisconsin, our dairy capital. And here's a map of the distribution of livestock throughout Wisconsin. And now to the grand finale of 39 billion people worth of poop going into the waterways with dead zones. I've talked a lot about dead zones on this channel, so I'll quickly go over this. Dead zones are caused by a eutrophication or an algae bloom from nutrients, which then starves the area of oxygen and kills all the aquatic life. 
There are over 400 dead zones in coastal waters across the world, depending on the time of year. Fish have literally been recorded trying to jump out of the water, as if the prospect of air, which they can't breathe, is better than the water they are in, and of course we get die-offs by the millions. And here's a map of how nutrients like nitrogen get from agricultural land to the Gulf of Mexico, the US's largest dead zone. There's also another crazy, less discussed effect of this manure algae bloom connection, and that is between cyanobacteria and ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. Cyanobacteria is a ubiquitous type of algae that produces small amounts of a neurotoxin called BMAA, which bioaccumulates up the food chain. The people of Guam historically had a 100 times higher rate of ALS than the rest of the world because they ate flying foxes which bioaccumulated a lot of BMAA. The important point here is that while well, BMAA levels in seafood vary, even some shrimp, which is low on the food chain, has been shown to have the same levels as the flying foxes of Guam and blue crab in Florida? twice as high. If you want to learn more about this astoundingly underappreciated connection between seafood and ALS, feel free to watch my ALS video where I cover studies that cement the causation between BMAA and ALS. Now back to the cause of dead zones. While the general trend appears to be that manure is the main source of nitrogen, it varies from location. For example, in Chesapeake Bay it is. The second main source is synthetic fertilizer runoff from crop fields. And because 50 to 80 percent of grain is fed to livestock in the U.S., depending on the source, animal agriculture is still the leading cause of dead zones. The final effect of manure that I quickly want to cover is that of air quality. Manure releases ammonia, methane, hydrogen sulfide, and a variety of volatile organic compounds. And as this study showed, people living around concentrated animal feeding operations like a factory farm have been shown to have increased eye irritation, difficulty breathing, and other negative effects, leading these scientists to conclude, quote, pollutants measured near hog operations are related to acute physical symptoms. All right, so in conclusion, there is one more statistic to add to the benefits of going vegan, and that is that you prevent the creation of 10,000 pounds of poop each year, which in turn creates less antibiotic resistance, contamination of tens of thousands of lakes, and your local dead zone. In the end, the manure issue is just one more aspect that highlights that arguably animal agriculture is the largest endeavor that humanity is engaged in, which obviously is leading to a lot of destruction. So eat more plants, and thank you for sitting through this video about poop. Feel free to like and subscribe and comment below about what you thought about it, and see you next time.